A female in her 40s presents to the emergency department after a head injury where she lost consciousness early the same day. She gets assessed and then goes on to have a non-contrast CT of her head, which we have here. What's the diagnosis? Let's go through the case. We can see there is a focus of high density here on the right side. Any high density on an acute CT head needs to be treated with suspicion for acute hemorrhage. When we look at this a little more closely, we can see it's a little heterogeneous and there may even be flecks of calcification within this. Importantly, there is no mass effect in that I can't see any low density around this to suggest vasogenic edema. The surrounding structures, such as the right lateral ventricle, are not distorted. Now let's compare this to a case of confirmed intraparenchymal hemorrhage in this separate case. In our case, we can see this doesn't look quite as dense as the confirmed hemorrhage, and there is no surrounding edema. There may even be calcification within. Although this may be an acute hemorrhage secondary to trauma, this could represent something else. Given the appearance on CT, the patient went on to have an MRI of their head. Here we have a T2 sequence, and you can see the area of high density on CT corresponds with a lesion on MRI that looks a bit like popcorn. If you look closer, you can see it has a low intensity rim. On the T1 sequence, we can see some high signal, and once we give gadolinium contrast, there isn't much change in appearance between the pre and post contrast images, so we can say there is no enhancement. Now this popcorn appearance and the low intensity rim are suggestive of a cerebral cavernous venous malformation, also known as a cavernoma or a cavernous malformation. These are low flow vascular malformations which are made up of thin wall dilated capillary spaces filled with blood. They aren't technically hemangiomas which are true proliferating neoplasms and these don't have those qualities. They can be single or multiple and they can shrink or grow over time. They can be found incidentally and be completely asymptomatic. But also they can bleed and present with neurological deficit and epilepsy. On CT like this case you might see a slight increase in density representing a mixture of calcification and blood without enhancement on post contrast images. Now if there has been recent hemorrhage it may become more dense and you can have surrounding vasogenic edema which manifests as a darker rim on CT. MRI is the best for diagnosis. On T2 images you get the classic popcorn appearance with a well-defined lobulated lesion. A low signal hemosiderin rim on T2 images is characteristic like we can see here. T1 images can show high signal like we've seen here and usually represents blood products. Post contrast images usually show no enhancement but you can find something called a developmental venous anomaly or DVA which manifests as several veins draining into a larger vein. Now this isn't usually harmful but is associated with cavernous malformations and lends weight to the diagnosis. Gradient echo and susceptibility weighted images are most sensitive especially for smaller lesions and you can see the characteristic blooming artifact which shows as low signal. When found incidentally, usually these are followed up and managed conservatively. They can however be resected in patients who develop recurrent hemorrhage, new neurological deficit or refractory epilepsy. The lesson here is really to be aware of this diagnosis. We do see them from time to time incidentally on CT and the key is if you see a possible bleed that just doesn't look as bright as barn door cerebral hemorrhage and may have flex of calcification, think about a cavernous malformation.